It's your boy Joseph on the track. Let's go. I put the city on top of my back. And it went way, way, way up. Like the D-line, I just go for my set. Better be having they wait up. We the ones turning it up to the mix. All that hate came days up. Cause we went way, way, way up. Never just way, way, way Hello and welcome to week 11 of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and tonight we wrap up the regular season with tons of games that have a ton on the line. Quick question, have you ever opened a Christmas present on Christmas Eve? That's kind of what we got in our game of the week. A playoff game before the playoffs. Lassa and Travis battle for the final postseason spot in District 12 5A. Everybody out here wants to make a statement and put Lassa on the map. We got stuff on the line for us. They want to make the drive whenever we do get in the playoffs, so we'll see who shows up. And not only do we want to get in the playoffs, like we want to win a playoff game. There is now something to come and fight for, as opposed to just being the smart kids, playing football to put something on my college resume. They set our record on the uh, announcement. One of the teachers was like, oh, why is our football team so good? They downplay us a lot. So we win this game, and we get to the playoffs, I feel like more kids will come down here to play football. Having been on the team since the inaugural year, um, and seeing the growth of the team, I mean, this is all that I'm looking forward to. This is my entire life right now. His entire life, and it is Lassa versus Travis in our game of the week. How's this for calling your shot? Lassa's pregame banner said, next stop, playoffs. I like the confidence, but not more than I like 33-yard touchdowns. Travis's Jordan Davis lobbed one up to Ronald Souls. Better call Souls. He'll answer. Next came a wild play at the goal line. Travis lined up for that tush-push quarterback sneak, but they forgot one thing, the ball. There it is, circled in the bottom right corner. Barrett Sib Sibenecker scooped it up and took it 45 yards in the opposite direction. That scoop and near score set up a touchdown from two of the guys that we heard from earlier in the show, Roman Edwards and Jalen Leach. Travis. Came back in this one, though, and they hold a lead right now. Actually, they just closed this game out. The Rebels won 42 to 14. So now that you guys have seen the highlights and you know about the players who scored that interesting play at the goal line, it's time for us to dig a little bit deeper with a man who was at the game and just talked to the head coach of the winning team and a few of the key players. Corey Mose, you caught up with the guys from Travis. Yeah, that's for sure, Jeff. Man, what a game. You just saw the highlights going back and forth. Well, the second half was nothing like that. Travis actually scored five straight touchdowns and shut out Lhasa in the second half, a completely different team after halftime. But I was able to catch up with the winners and now playoff bound Rebels and also talk to coach after he got a little Gatorade dumped on him as well. Jordan, what a game, right? Sure. Playoff bound, how does that sound? It's amazing. I did it for this community, my seniors. And this coach right here, it's amazing. I love it. What does that coach mean to you over there? Man, that's my stepdad. Mm. Yes, sir. And so being able to go down the field five times in the second half and finish with five touchdowns, how were you able to do that? Execution, blocking, every play. I felt no pressure back there. Every play, it was great. It's this, it's this all on. Gotcha. We really worked this summer, and it paid off. Got gotcha. you. Frank, let me bring you in. On the defensive side of the ball, Y'all shut him out the whole second half. What was the difference from first half to second half? You know what I'm saying? We just needed, we needed to take a step back and really, you know what I'm saying, get into it so we could. Yeah. It just, we just locked in, man. We just yeah. locked in at halftime. That's all it was. And coach, let me bring you in. This isn't sweat, by the way. <laughs> no. This is a Gatorade bath. First off, is it too chilly for the Gatorade bath? Yeah, it, it feels good. It don't matter. It feels great. It yeah. feels great. And you saw the team, the way they all kind of got around you. Had little dance moves as well in there in the bit. circle. We got a little bit back yeah. in my younger days. I, I can move a little bit. <laughs> what does this win mean for you and the program and for this team? You know, it, I've been at Travis for 20 years, and it, it's a long time. But we, we haven't been in uh, the last two years. Two years ago, we made the playoffs, but we hadn't we hadn't been in for like eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just great to be back. And it just feels great for our, for our kids. They worked their butts off. They believe in what we're doing, our school and our community. And now that makes two out of three years we're in the playoffs. So we got to keep it going, be consistent. So just really happy for these kids, especially our coaches worked hard, really uh, great game plans. But these guys executed and they got the job done tonight. Yeah. Now, no cap, y'all. I'm telling you right now, those dance moves that coach had, Sensational. All right, he got a little jiggy with it down low. So I see why the Rebels play for this guy, and I also see why they're playoff bound. Jeff? 
Hmm, maybe a little Dancing with the Stars coaches edition in the offseason? Uh, the wheels are turning, Corey. The wheels are turning right now. Now, that would be a historic show, and we're, we're doing something a little different here in tonight's show as well. Corey, you travel home safely while I bring in my friend Tyler Feldman. Guys, we have a postseason picture that is so cloudy, I had to bring in backup early to clear <laughs> this up. Tyler. Tell us what's going on in that district, man. Jeff, A Block, great to be here with you this early. <laughs> it's been a log jam in the middle of District 25-6A all season long, which means there was meaningful football to be played this final week of the regular season. Round Rock, McNeil, Westwood, Vista Ridge, all four of those teams still fighting for just three playoff spots. Mm, four teams, three spots. I see the problem. Mm -hmm. So guys, I spent the majority of Wednesday afternoon going through different tiebreakers and ways that this district could finish. And what we found were there were two games that held uh, a lot more importance than the others on the schedule. And they happened to be the two games that you went to this evening. Tell us how they went. How about that, Jeff? <laughs> Let's kick things off at the Palace. McNeil battling Cedar Ridge. And it's easy for the Mavs. They win, and yeah, they're in. That's simple for the steaming horses. That is scary. And hey, those steaming horses waste little time getting on the board first. Josh Gaden galloping in from six yards out. That gives McNeil an early 7-0 lead as the Mavs clinch a spot in the playoffs for the first time in 19 years. Wow. Congrats, guys. Yeah, they post their third shutout victory of the season, 31-0 over Cedar Ridge. So the Mavs are in. What about over at Dragon Stadium, where the Dragons of Round Rock were looking to get out of those buckets and beat the Rangers of Vista Ridge. Rangers jump out to an early 14-0 lead, but back bounce Cody Moore's Dragons. Late first half, Mason Cochran over the middle. And what a sensational one-handed grab, Hayden Nath, wow. What a catch. That keeps the drive moving and later sets up this short touchdown run from the Moose. Moose Garlington right before halftime. Dragons tied up at 14, but it's Vista Ridge who comes away with the win and a playoff spot 21 to 20. The narrowest of margins there. All right, to the scoreboard for the first time tonight. And here's the final piece of that 25-6A puzzle. What would happen in the Westwood Vandergriff game? Well, now we know. Vandergriff finished an undefeated regular season, beating Westwood 38 to 7. That combination of the two games Tyler just told us about and the one on the top of your screen right now means that Vandergriff, Round Rock, McNeil, and Vista Ridge make the playoffs in Westwood. Sadly, the Warriors had a great regular season. But that's where it ends, in the regular season. Stony Point and Maynard are also on the outside looking in. The Tigers win the season finale 19 to 16. More scores coming your way. San Marcos, oh, the Rattlers could not finish their regular season with a win. They fall against San Antonio East Central 45 to 21. And Glenn also falls to an out-of-town team. A&M Consolidated, one of the stronger teams in that district, ends their regular season with a win over Glenn. They win 38 to 20. Back to the highlights. Connolly hope to prove they are head and shoulders above their rivals from Pflugerville. Opening kick, Connolly's Lawrence Doe takes it back for six. Now, Lawrence is also a soccer star, so we could say this is a goal. Nope, touchdown spills right. The playoff math is easy on this one. If Pflugerville wins, they're in. If the Panthers lose, Elgin is in. Ryder Miller put Pflugerville on top. Then a Javion Martin catch and run helped extend the lead. But could they hold on? Producer, show us the score. Oh, they do hold on. Pflugerville, they were down late in this game, but they reeled off a 20-3 run at the end of this. I'm hearing they won on a scoop and score late in the fourth. The final score in this one, 41 to 38. More scores coming your way. Let's get the board up there. Leander, oh, falls to Eastview by 10, 44 to 34, the final in that one. Another final up north, Cedar Park beats Georgetown by a touchdown, 28 to 21. They are on to the postseason. College Station gets a win over Hendrickson, 42 to 14. And Hayes and Lehman down south, the rivalry game there. Hayes walks away with a 33 to 14 win. Guys, we have updated you on 12 games so far, and we have so much more left to show you. Scores, highlights, our Band of the Week, and our Play of the Week nominees are all coming up next.
undefeated district season. But the only thing standing in their way, Jeff, a very good Crockett team featuring Texas Tech commit mm. Cameron Dickey. Yeah, that guy is very, very good. Both teams wanted this one bad after some social media back and forth earlier mm. this week. Now, Trayon Young Henderson says you can keep the fourth. I just need the back. Oh. Way back of the end zone. He got the tiptoes down then. And then later in the first, throwing at Yaheem Riley is like playing in a first date at the Cheesecake Factory. The internet doesn't recommend it. Riley with the interception that he turned into a pick six. And for the record, I love the Cheesecake Factory. All right, here's one of the plays. That you do too. Yeah. Nice. Here's one of the plays of the game. Crockett's Cameron Dickey rolling right, then launched one back to his left. Jamari Wilson found the ball, <laughs> lost his helmet, and earned six points in the process. This game is still ongoing. LBJ is up big in the fourth, though, 57 to 21. Over in lovely Liberty Hill, how about a battle for the 13-5A district title between the 6-3 and three Panthers and 8-1 and Piper Warriors. Warriers run out to a 12-0 lead. Panthers scratch back. Heavy pressure. Intercepted. No one was there except for Garrett Lindgren. Pick City, and look at all that real estate in front of number 42. Lingren, log gun, 72-yard pick six. That big-time play tied things up at 12 right before the half, but it's San Antonio Piper who earns the district crown this year, 33-23 to 23 over Liberty Hill. Scores coming your way right now. Marble Falls ends the regular season with a loss. San Antonio Davenport beat them 28 to 7. And it's Bernie over Fredericksburg. Pretty big there, 47 to 7. The final out west. More scores coming your way. Cuero beats LaGrange 49-17. And Gonzalez over Giddings. The Buffalo. They fought hard, took them to overtime, but they fall 44 to 38. Back to the highlights, 26-6A, Anderson making the trip out to Dripping Springs. Tigers looking to roll into the playoffs with three straight wins. Trojans Ooh. hoping to end their season with a huge upset. Tigers quarterback, Max Maher, having a great junior season. He drips in a pretty ball to Cooper Reed, who makes the catch and runs the rest of the way for the touchdown. Then later, senior quarterback, Jack Williams, calls his own number. QB keeper in for the scores. The Tigers score a big win with two quarterbacks to end their regular season, eight and two, 52 to 17 over Anderson. Let's go to the scoreboard. 13-4A matchups, Taylor and Burnett both already heading to the playoffs. This game simply for seeding. Bulldogs bite the Ducks 13 to seven. That means the Ducks drop to the fourth and final playoff spot. As for Lampasas, the Badgers beat battle-tested Canyon Lake 53-34. More scores, McCallum currently up on East side 63 to nothing in the fourth quarter. And San Antonio Veterans Memorial beating Cedar Creek 35 to 7. The Eagles couldn't pick up that win this season. Mm, yeah, tough one for them. Hey, here's some good news for our local viewers, though. Every single week this season, we're going to showcase a local group as our Friday Football Fever Band of the Week. We've done it 10 times so far. Why not 11? Why not 11? <laughs> exactly. This week, that honor goes to the band from Westwood. It's Friday with the Warriors already celebrating the weekend.
It is time for our drive of the week. Kerrville Tyvee made the two hour drive to play Lockhart and tonight was win or go home. It was a battle for fourth place in that district and that of course comes along with the final playoff spot. Yeah, Jeff, gotta love this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Early November, playoff spots on the line. A win would send the Lions roaring back into the playoffs in consecutive seasons for the first time since 2014, Ooh. 2015. Yeah, gotta love it. Lions won eight games last year. They've got just three wins this year, but yeah, they still have a shot to make the postseason. Early on, Antlers driving, Aiden Varwig veering left and right, then finding the end zone for the touchdown. Lions, ferocious. They come on back, Nathan Rowland. Rolling on in for the score. Number three, giving the Lions six. This was a back and forth ball game. Really good ball game. And here comes the big play. Ashton Dickens rolling out, throwing on the run. And what a catch. Oh, my. Far sideline, Gage Deutsch. Gaging things right on that throw <laughs> for the touchdown. Lockhart locks up a playoff spot. 31 to 30 oh. over Kerrville Tyvee. Yeah. One point win. Nice. Hey, here we go. Some scores are up here. Let's read them. That's <laughs> Smithville on top of Caldwell in the fourth quarter of this one. 20 to 0 the score there. And Lago Vista, the Vikings, getting back to their winning ways, it seems right now at least. Mm. They're up on Gerald in the second half, 35 to 26. More scores coming your way. Maynard New Tech, last game of the career for head coach Quincy Williams, who is retiring after the regular season, which is right now. They fall to Geronimo Navarro, a good team, a playoff team, 59 to 6. And Wimberley closes out an undefeated regular season, uh, doing what they've done all season long, and that's being dominant on the football field. The Texans beat Austin Achieve 63 to nothing. To the private school, St. Michael's traveled to Regents. The Crusaders hope to leave with an upset and a Band of the Week nomination. It's possible, but tough when you're playing against the Regents defense. Charlie Griffin, no relation to Peter or Lois, but I'm pretty sure his family was proud of their guy. Charlie Sack ends a Crusaders drive, stealing the first Quinn Murphy to Cade Milligan, two sophomores doing hard things. Cade shook off a face mask and sprinted down the right sideline. He was stopped about four yards shy of the end zone, and those four yards were key. Moments later, Lawson Watkins with the interception. It was 0-0 midway through the second. Well, that score did not stick. Regents did find the end zone quite a few times. The Knights win 31-0. Scoreboard. Lano, the Yellow Jackets snap a three-game losing skid, beating Ingram Moore 49-27, but the Jackets miss the playoffs mm. because Marion wins the tiebreaker. A tough season for the Florence Buffaloes. They finish winless after falling to Clifton 42 to nothing. Hey, there's always next year. How about the Mason Punchers? The opposite. They finish the regular season undefeated after taking down Harper 61 to 6. Johnson City Eagles take stock of Stockdale. They beat the Brahmas 18 to 7. We'll be right back after this with more football.
Time to meet our Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Abacus Plumbing, Air Conditioning, and Electrical. Hey, Jason. Athlete of the Week. Here you go, baby. How you doing? <laughs> Two interceptions for yourself. Y'all were able to pick off the number one passer in the state four times today. How'd y'all do that? It was just a great team meeting. I mean, great uh, team practice all week. We stayed focused, we stayed locked in, and we just got the job done today. And uh, throughout the game today, I love y'all swagger on defense. Y'all like to shake the finger. I love that. Does that kind of give y'all motivated some some type of energy on the defense? Yes, sir. It gives us, it gets us hype. We we love it. We anything we can get to get us hype, we take. We need it so we can go out and ball. And lastly, bro, with this win, y'all going to go against Cedar Hill next week. Man, how deep can this team go? We can go as far as we want to go. It's all on us. We just got to lock in, focus, and just play our game. That's really all we got to do, but yes, sir. All right, well, congratulations. Keep balling out this year, and good luck in the playoffs. Yes, sir. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, yeah one more time for this. Yeah. Yes, sir. You live, boy. Let me see that. You live, boy. Let me see that. You live, boy. Let me see that. You Time for our big save of the week, sponsored by Austin Telco. Guys, let's get right to our nominees. Our first play is from our game of the week. This is a tush push gone wrong. Travis players look confused because they left something behind. The ball. <laughs> Losses Barrett Schnebeker said one man's trash is another man's treasure. The scoop and near score allowed Lassa to pull off a 14-point swing. Barrett, with a play so good I can hardly bear it. Mm. Jeff, over at Dragon Stadium, I saw a catch so good, I just want to see it again and again and again. Hated that, twisting and turning and needing just one Ooh. hand to make the grab on the pass from Mason Cochran. Talk about a highlight reel grab. Hated that. That's how you do it. Well done. I see your first down catch, and I raise you one. Here's something that looks equal parts amazing and painful. Crockett's Jamari Wilson catches a deep pass thrown across the field. Jamari's helmet popped off, but the ball never wobbled. Bonus points on that long touchdown catch. Guys, now that you've seen the nominees, it's time for you to let us know which play is your favorite. You do that by going to my Twitter, my X page, mm. at Jeff Jones Sports. There, you'll see a poll that I just created with those three, three plays. You vote, we'll add up all the votes. We'll let at X add up all the votes, and we'll reveal the winner Tuesday during our 6 p.m. show. I actually crunch those numbers. You crunch those yeah, numbers? Yeah, I just make sure that they're right. I appreciate you. Behind the scenes. You deserve your credit. Hey, <laughs> as do Bonus our, points. As do the people who work <laughs> behind the scenes. So special shout out to Joe, the producer, Marla, the floor director, all of our photographers who went around town. We had Abby, Jake, Scott, Fabian. A lot of people help us out here. Corey. Corey. There we go. Tyler. Jeff. A lot of people <laughs> shooting video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we appreciate you. We'll see you next week for our final Friday football fever of the season.